Hi everyone. Every year when I get a new batch of students, I get asked what my top recommendations of film books are for the start of their studies. And I've been asked a few times online as well to give these recommendations, so I decided to kind of mix the list up, and I've come up with my five top books for film students or film fans. Okay, so the first one is a comic book. Seriously, this is one of my favorite books, not just in film, this is one of my favorite books. I love this. This is Filmish by Edward Ross. And it is amazing because it's really a journey through film. Now, the way it's set out is in kind of chapters based on themes. So you've got the eye, the body, sets and architecture, time, voice and language. And he almost takes each theme and looks at how that concept has been played with in film. And what I love, what I absolutely love about this book is... He, he goes through so many different films. There are hundreds of films referenced in this book that as you go through, you almost find like, oh, I want to revisit that film. I want to look at that again. I've never heard of this film. I want to check this one out. And the artwork is so good where it takes iconic shots and explains why it is such a perfect example of whatever it is they're speaking about. So this one, this is like a coffee table book, you know? It's not one that you would ever refer to for your studies. If you're referring to an essay, I don't think you'd go, oh, I've got to check out Filmish. But if you love film and you just love exploring the history of film, the concepts of film, this is a really, really interesting discourse that just talks about film by someone who clearly loves film and it's designed for people who love film. So I love this book. The next one is one I didn't actually buy. I inherited this book. So when I became a teacher, this was kind of sat on the bookshelf of the classroom I inherited. Uh, and it's Barry Norman's 100 Best Films of the Century, which might seem like a really strange choice, bearing in mind there are tons of 100 greatest film videos and articles and stuff like that out there. But the reason I love this one is, if you are a fairly new film student or you're fairly young and you haven't watched many films before 2000, uh, if you have seen the 100 20th century films in this book, then you can basically say you've seen all the ones that actually matter. You know, The Godfather, Citizen Kane, the kind of the landmark films that to be a, a film historian or a true film buff you should have seen, they're in this book. So, I mean, if I go to the contents page, oh, and incidentally, it starts off with a really cool introduction. So it's uh, the, the first chunk of the book is like a really mini history of film. Going back to like, you know, the in invention of film, uh, the golden age, Hollywood, stuff like that. It goes through everything in a nutshell. So I love the introduction. But let's look at kind of the films that we've got here. Films that you, you I would I say should have seen, but like the landmark films of the 20th century. We've got Apocalypse Now, Bonnie and Clyde, Birth of a Nation, very controversial film at the moment. Uh, Bringing Up Baby, Casablanca. Napoleon, The Grapes of Wrath, The Godfather, Part 1 and Part 2, No Godfather, Part 3, Richard III, Psycho, 2001 A Space Odyssey. The 100 films in this book are ones that you should sink your teeth into if you have as much appreciation for where cinema has come from as where it's going. Okay, so those two books that we've looked at so far, they're almost kind of, they are, I'd call them coffee table books. They're really fun to browse if you enjoy film and you just want to kind of like investigate film. If you're ready to start taking it seriously, I actually love the Teach Yourself range and Teach Yourself Film Studies, an introduction. This book is fantastic when you start taking things uh, slightly more academically. So uh, in this book, it covers all of the main concepts that no matter which specification of film studies you study, stuff like uh, mise-en-scene, shot composition, textual analysis, film review, all of those concepts are covered in this book in a real kind of uh, uh, easy to understand introductory fashion. Again, there are tons and tons of case studies that they look at, which I really like. Usually for each concept, they really go into detail with one particular film. So for example, here it's talking about narrative and it uses Mulholland Drive as a particular case study. So that's one that you could kind of like pick up and look further in if you're studying narrative. But for kind of like the start of your academic studies, this is definitely the place to go. Okay, let's say you've kind of read that book and you're ready to take it a step further. You uh, are maybe more at a university level, whereas I suppose that one's a bit more kind of like GCSE to A level. Uh, if you want to take it to a more higher education level, understanding film theory 
is amazing. It's not a cheap book, so I bought this one during lockdown because um, it's been on my wish list for like a long time. So I've not even read it all yet. But it's about £25 and it really covers the key film theories in a lot of detail. And when I say the key film theories, I'm really talking about the ones that you'd expect to see here. Auteur theory, adaptation, genre theory, formalism, Marxism, psychoanalysis, postmodernism, feminism, masculinity, queer theory. Now again, what I love about this book uh, at least from what I've read of it so far, is this tends to focus on one particular case study per topic and go into an incredible amount of detail. Whereas Filmish kind of like it hops all over the place where it's talking about time in Blade Runner, then time in Interstellar. This one, we'll have uh, Auteur Theory talking specifically about Hitchcock, or we'll talk about Marxism with the Lego movie. So this book for the more serious academic interested in film is absolutely amazing. And finally, the one you could almost call the Bible to film. This has had, I'm on the fourth edition. I've got a funny feeling there might be a fifth edition now. How to read a film. And you can see that is a chunky book. This is a, uh, a Bible of filmmaking. Now, it goes through literally everything about film. From the invention of film through to literally how it's made, the difference of recording on film to recording digitally, to how a shot is composed, uh, to how people interpret film, how it's analysed. So, whereas these ones are all pretty much about the analysis of film and the academic understanding of film, this one is, this is literally the Bible of film. So if we go through again, this one's, uh, it's all black and white, uh, but lots of photos. Um, and almost, this one I think treats film as an art the most. So it actually starts off by looking at how people understand art, literally in the traditional sense. Um, and then it goes on to talking about technology and sound. So talking about lens, camera, film stock, how they all have an impact on the filmmaking process. So this one is, this is one I refer to an awful lot when I'm writing lessons because there might be a very, very specific uh, topic that I'm looking at. Uh, this is probably where I would go first. Those are the five books I would pick up, guys, if I was uh, serious about getting started in film. Depending on your level and, and your, your experience, you might want to go into something quite uh, uh, accessible like Filmish. Or if you are an experienced film student, you can go straight in there with how to make a film or film theory. But I hope that helps, guys. I hope you find this interesting. If you do, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Um, and otherwise, I will see you next time.